Did anybody watch all of the tribute videos? Because I did not. I watched no. the majority of them. Did you watch them? I did. It was just on, so I, you know, the remote was like way over there, you know. Well, what was your takeaway from watching them? I was sad. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was really weird to uh, to watch the beginning of the show because uh, Vince McMahon comes out and he does this big long speech, and I don't know what it was. It was, I mean, maybe like I, I, I don't. How old was I in nine eleven? Twenty six or something like that. Take away twenty from right now. This is very difficult, Craig. I think it was 26. But anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to remember 26 or 20 years ago or whatever. Sure. And, you know, maybe, you know, it occurred and it was horrible. And then maybe two days, because this was two days after it occurred, right? Mm, yes. yes. Two days? The 13th. So, so maybe two days after it occurred, like, n- nobody knew the full gravity of the situation. If you look, if you look at the, if you look at it from today's eyes, and you look at how much the world actually changed after nine eleven, I mean, everything. There was so much about life that changed mm-hmm. after nine eleven. Uh, maybe two days after nine eleven, all of this hadn't hit people yet as to how much everything was was ultimately going to change. I mean, for most people, you know, one of the main things that still affects people to this day is going to the airport. Like, if you remember going to the airport before 9-11, mm-hmm. and then you think about going to the airport after 9-11, I mean, for most normal people, that's one of the main things in their, in their I shouldn't say daily life, but like every time you go to the airport, everything in the airport is all because of 9-11. And two days after 9-11, most people hadn't gone to the airport. But my point of all of this is, Vince comes out and he's doing this promo about how America is strong and everything like that. And I'm not saying it was like it was a bad promo or it, I mean, she didn't even say the word promo. He's going to speech or whatever. But it really struck me that when you listen to it, it was like Vince. I mean, he was being very patriotic, but it was like he didn't grasp the gravity of what had just occurred. And maybe the reality is on that day, people didn't grasp the gravity, the full gravity of what 9-11 actually meant to this country. But it was interesting to look back and, you know, he's just running his show. He's like, oh, we're the first company to run a show and ah, the show must go on and God bless America and blah, 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 and just moved on. It's very weird to watch. I'm not saying it was, think- it was good or bad. It was just weird to watch. I think it's place and time because, again, I was there and I remember being there at the time. And it's like that speech felt very motivating and uplifting. And it's like watching it back in 2021, it did feel like he's hyping the company and how great are we and using it as a bit of promo. And it's like at the time, I didn't feel that way at all. And I think it was because there was a really large degree of shock and a lot of nerves because, again, on 9-11, we were supposed to do SmackDown. And obviously the planes went into the tower and we're like calling the office like, what the hell are we doing? And they're like, show up at the building. We'll discuss it there. And we all went down to the arena on Tuesday and sat around and, then you know, they had catering for us. And then they said, we're going to try to do the show on Thursday. Everybody just sit tight. And we all went back to our hotels and just sat in Houston, you know, wondering what the hell was going on. And it's like all flights were canceled. I remember Christian, his wife was on a flight coming back from Germany and she was diverted and landed in Gander, Newfoundland. So his wife stranded in Canada. He stranded in Houston. It was there was a real chaos about it. And I remember not just me, a lot of guys being nervous because at the time George Bush was president. This is his hometown. And we're doing this large gathering in Houston, Texas, Hmm. the hometown of the president of the United States. And it's like, there was a lot of people that were nervous about this. Yeah, I want to say one other thing about the speech, and then we can talk about the rest of the show. And it also ties into Stephanie's speech here. Okay, listen. When you watch this, and uh, Lance, Lance mentioned this with Vince's speech, I mean, a lot of it was putting over the company. We're running a show. We're not going to be afraid. 
we're going to be here tonight. We're the first, blah, blah, blah. And then Stephanie, her tribute, starts with her talking about how many years ago some people tried to hurt my family, hurt my father. They tried to tear my family apart. And I presume, I mean, it could have been the steroid scandal she was talking about. It could have been the Ring Boy scandal. Some people, I mean, anyway. But anyway, she's talking about this. And then her point is like, these people tried to tear our family apart, but they couldn't. Just like this will not tear this country apart. And when you watch, you're like, what in the fuck? Sorry, Granny, but that's the only thing you can think. What in the fuck is this person? What? Why is she talking? What is happening here? And of course, people have been thinking that for 20 years. Now, I will say this, okay, about her and Vince. And this is also about Owen Hart and the show must go on and the wrestlers going to the ring after that and the, the hell in a cell when Brian Pillman died and everyone went to the show and worked after that. When a traumatic event occurs, I always have a semblance of sympathy for people who make, quote, dumb decisions. Because when things like that happen, you're often not thinking rationally. You're under a tremendous amount of stress. You're not thinking straight. You're just making a decision in the moment. And then, of course, you know, people break down your decision for 20 years afterwards with plenty of hindsight and plenty of time and they don't have the stress that you had when you had to make those decisions i mean i i give them a little bit of leeway because this was a very traumatic thing for everybody in this country but with that said why is this about the mcmahons it's not about the mcmahons i i mean it's it's just I don't know why I watched it. I just, I'm like a glutton for punishment. I just had to. It, it was the one that I paused and, and, and listened to as well. I actually listened to mine as well, just because I was curious what I had said. But just also for a little bit of insight, when we got to the building on Thursday, everyone was told that there's a special room set up. Anyone that would like to say anything, you're welcome to go in and say it. We'll record it. We'll be playing it on the show. If you don't want to say anything... No problem either. It's there if you want to. Anytime during the day, find your way to it. And it was a tiny, completely black room. And it was it was very easy to get emotional and caught up in the moment because you go in and then you sit down and there's just almost this void. And you're feeling a little bit isolated as it is because we're, you know, we're stranded on the road. We can't get back home to our families and so forth. And you just sit there in the dark room and they turn the camera on and say, Go ahead, say what you'd like to say, and you just spoke. And so in that regard, it was really emotional. And again, I wasn't originally going to say anything. And Paul Heyman actually came up to me during the day and said, you're going to say something, right? And I was like, I was debating on not. And he says, I really think you should. I think you'll offer a different perspective and, and give a different outlook than some of these other people. I'd appreciate it if you would. So I did. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.